this is Lady Maya. Hello, you guys, and thank you so much for joining us again with your free will. I am joined again by Mr. Andrew Baker. He has always been just a phenomenal voice uh, on my show. And so, of course, you know, I had to beg him to come back, right? <laughs> so here you go. Without further ado, my Mayan tribe, please welcome Mr. Andrew. Hello, beloved. How you doing today? Doing well, doing well. Um, I just want to take the time to thank you first and foremost. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the conversations you and I have had were just so pivotal in so many different aspects. And so I was just like, no, I gotta get that recorded, sir. Please, can you please, please, please go back. <laughs> because there were so many things that you know um, we discussed. Uh, mm-hmm and how things work, how we believe things should by what we were taught um, and different things like that. So, you know, I definitely wanted to have the type of comp- that type of conversation on the show just to kind of see what others think as well, not only what we think. So um, definitely, I, I know you probably Man, we talk about so much that the right, day. Right. It was always something. It was like, oh yeah, and another thing, and it was, right. it was good. But um, mine, my mindset was mostly on the financial sector of okay. um, the things, because you know that being your jam. Uh, <laughs> you know, we don't truly understand it or why we feel the way that we do. And so I thought that was an interesting conversation because, you know, we don't always know and we're Mm -hmm. fearful for whatever reason. And so I wanted to see if I can pick your brain on that one. Okay. Yes, definitely. So I'm going to ask you this then. Um, Okay. What have you found or maybe with conversations you've had with people in regards to finances, um, what were you finding? that they were believing so when it comes to finances in the beginning it was what people were told were told that when it comes to money they must do a nine to five job uh, you know work hard uh, let me go and say I hate that phrase um, work hard a nine to five job get paid by weekly and then save up that money to then buy a house and then hopefully pay up the house in 30 years and then hope that your retirement is in a position where you can actually be able to get money from it right that is not gone that is what um, I saw growing up it's kind of like a rich dad poor dad experience that I'm having right and then as I put myself around those who understand the financial world the one phrase that keeps coming up and statement that keeps coming up is hey Andrew money is a tool that's what it is once you start seeing money as a tool you start attracting it to you because you're using it for not just for yourself but you're using it in a way where it can help others and your family in the future so once you start recognizing that as a tool um, and you actually control what it um, what is meant to be. Um, things start to fall in place for you. So that that is what I've learned so far. That's what the conversations are so far. Yeah, I get it. Um, I think the conversation that I had with my mom just giving me like a uh, um, super real example, which mm-hmm. was kind of odd to me as I got older. Um, I was told to, you know, go to school, get out of school, go to another school, college, Mm -hmm. to get a nine to five that will give you benefits and pay for your retirement. And I looked Mm -hmm. at that and I said, that sounds boring. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. And so um, from the perspective of doing something like that, to me, it looked it looked like slavery 
you know it was you know you were entrapped in someone else's system system and they were deciding whether you were worth this or not and i uh -huh. thought that was just no i'm like i know what i'm worth i'm a go-getter uh -huh. you know i always try to improvise um when i see that something may not be working or something could work a little bit better you know uh -huh. so i i think a lot of the jobs that i've well, primarily most of the jobs that i've had were commission based so whatever i if i worked hard i got good money you know whereas if i didn't and i just went to chill and i just wanted to show up just just to make it seem like hey i'm working because i'm here <laughs> you know i didn't make so much which was fine with me because if i made enough like i was supposed to working as hard as i did I didn't have to work so hard on other days, you know. Okay. I'm good. My bank is nice, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. My girls are fed. Everything, everything is hunky dory. But at the same time, like, why? It, it was so odd to me because even when my kids got older, and um, they looked at commission-based jobs as a no-no because they didn't think that they could put enough in the bank to make the money and I was just like mm -hmm. why I'm like excuse me you are my child uh, <laughs> I felt some type of way but I had to understand because like I was initially fearful of that type of thing because of how my mom raised us mm -hmm. so it was just like mm, yeah I guess not but I mean okay let me ask you this then um has there been a breakthrough or at least something that you give people the um, the option to look at or to understand or to, you know, at least take into consideration just to kind of get them out of that rat race? Well, I'm going to use your explanation and segue into that. So there's another commission job. Mm -hmm. I used to turn a frown at it because I'm like, why would I? work at this job or something like this because um, there's no security in it right but when I took a step back and said wait a minute I am actually in control of how much I earn yes it's underneath this brand but in order for me to they can't put a cap minimum or maximum on how much I earn I'm the one that controls that right and thus it's kind of like you're an entrepreneur in a sense because you're learning how to time manage you're learning about the product and you're learning how to develop relationships with people right so that that's the beauty of a commission job uh, a nine to five job gives people a security because they know that they're coming back to an institution that's giving them a paycheck every two weeks but on the other side, the institution is actually working on commission because that institution has to provide a service to whoever that client or clientele are for them to earn that money. And then they pay a certain percentage of that to that employee, right? So that's how the employee has that sense of security, right? Um, so that goes into my breakthrough, right? To whereas I had to take a step back and say, okay, there is nothing wrong with the commission job however it's tapping into that entrepreneurial spirit that i have and it's teaching me how to do these do these things uh, so for others i would, i would say a breakthrough would have to be for them to be in an uncomfortable position because that's when a breakthrough sometimes happens. you have to be uncomfortable um and when you're uncomfortable your engine your genius mind starts to look at different ways because the mind does have a protective mechanism built into it it's not going to look at different ways for you to survive, right? So when you said that you were working hard when you saw your commission job, you no, know, it was your mind saying, you know, we're going to find a way to work smarter, right? So I, I, I would put money on it so much that you sat back one day at the, you probably had like a bad day at work at your commission job, sat back and said, well, look, how can I do better tomorrow? That's your mind Perfect. telling you, let's think smarter, right? If I spoke to this person this one way, what if I tweak it a little bit? Now the intelligence factor is picking up in your mind and you're just writing out different points. Now the next day you went to work, 
he approached it differently and you got a different result because you used the tool of intelligence for you to be able to break down how to communicate to that person. So money was secondary to you after that because you really focused on how can I make my approach better to the end buyer for them to actually do what I want them to do and that's for them to purchase this product and when that my company or the company I'm working for sees that they're going to reward me the funds that I need right so and that was you know what it's so mm. funny you said that cuz the approach had to be more feeling based cuz I used to sell right. it all okay Maybe okay it didn't matter mm-hmm. um it had to be feeling based and if I mm-hmm. can get them to connect the feeling to mm-hmm. this product Mm-hmm. They weren't leaving with it, you right. know. And so, I mean, I would get the kids, put them in the pl- in the kids' playroom. Hey, you see what you're gonna do for us? Mm-hmm. This is me and the babies. Hey, mm-hmm. you know, and and not right. just that. It was, you know, just asking the right questions. That was always so helpful because you had to find out which way you were supposed to even come at this person, right. or even right. if this person needed something like this. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was always a thing and, and, and I guess I got in a lot of trouble because mm-hmm. I was the type of person that'd be like got the keys let's go and so we would be gone for so long because I said what I need you to understand is this is your vehicle right. let's go to the store mm-hmm. let's come out of this store and I'm like oh that's a nice vehicle I wonder who owns that and mm-hmm. I took look at them they cheats and grin and grin it hey yeah that is a nice car ain't it y'all you know, you know you get that thing waxed real good you know that thing gonna shine you know but when they started seeing it as theirs it was easy you know and so i did understand that and and it, it truly helped me with everything after that everything after that and so i mean even doing this this is nonsense i'm like yo but it's like talking to your girlfriend mm-hmm. and like, mm-hmm. your girlfriend is having a friend you know a friend and having right. that conflict you know and right. doing things like that and just trying to see um different sides and you're like you know what i didn't think about that one. you know i mean it's just right. one of those things you know a lot of times we are so closed off from so right. many different things that we're not even like no i don't want to deal with that because you know finances was one of those spots that not everybody was just even willing to have the conversation about it's still not you know it can be that they don't it can be regret of them not learning about the that that twitter so so to them it's like i don't want to seem like i'm an idiot i know what i'm talking about it can be uh that how did how can they tell someone else who's younger than them uh about a product they don't understand um and that could be another thing why they don't talk about it they as in being the older generation right um i would say that currently my experience is that um even though i have a family and so forth my mom uh she's i would say and i said i think i told you before i learned about money from my mom without her verbally teaching me about it mm-hmm. i learned from how she approached her work I learned from the things that she went through and there are children that says hey when i grow up you know and i do something i'm gonna make sure i take care of my mom but there's no financial literacy to tell you the steps a through z on how to sustain maintain and duplicate the funds that you're looking to do to help take care of your family but with my experience with my mom has been i saw how she was able to turn maintain sustain one asset and do so much more to the point where she oftentimes struggle with giving me control but it's because that to her it's she always raises the bar for me so even though she knows that i have a great financial acumen to her is like it's not enough to her is like my son needs to know more which is another way of okay learn how to do this smarter I'll find a way to even do it better, right? So if I want to do it better, that means that there's always room for growth, right? So, right. So, so that's one of the things of, about financial literacy is, is knowing that 
you will never know the full science of money but once you understand the basics always know that there's always room for growth once you find out how to learn things easier you learn a way to do it easier you're gonna say okay how can i do this easier the next day so i think it's interesting because mm -hmm. um a lot of the kids now when they see how things are mm -hmm. and what you need to do to get it right. they take that thing and go running and i mean mm -hmm. they're making six figures eight right. and i mean almost on the way to seven mm -hmm. with knowing what they know and testing keep testing keep testing mm -hmm. further and I look at that as like, wow, if I only knew. But see, I'm, I'm, I've never really been great with numbers. Numbers mm -hmm. scare me, to be honest. You know, okay, okay. I'm a forty, y'all. And so, you know, I've, I've never been that great with numbers. And I was just like, I don't think this is gonna work. <laughs> I don't think, that, you know. So I, all I knew was, as long as it was the bills was paid and. You know, I might have a few dollars left over to, you know, treat the girls to something. That was mm -hmm. that was kind of it for me. But I'm, you know, like really trying to do something else. Now, I, I will say this. Of course, Sister Girl went after every commission job she could find. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I did get my life insurance license. You know, okay. do that for a while, but you know. Uh, Certain companies I don't care for, um, mm -hmm. but I, I'll say I mean I was I was writing down the numbers like okay mm -hmm. this is gonna be this and this is gonna be that and this is gonna be this and I mean not really knowing what I could actually do to make that work for us you know mm -hmm. for my family and for. You know what's that was the least even an option to do to better my situation that was always a hard thing like even now it's for me it's still just a little bit harder I, I I'm taking my time I get a step by step um, or maybe it take a week or so for that first step to like really seep in but I think it's right I think it's it's something that really needs to be known because like now in this day and age is so much different than you know how it was before because how it was before was you had to be a whole total adult to mm -hmm. know what you could do with money you know right. and now it's like please do you know you got like 12 year olds 17 year olds you know making money like really making mo like good money like man like if we had that do you not know where we would be <laughs> because like it's not like they have to go into a job and check in you know yeah. they make that money and it's like it's so different it's way different it's like the whole financial status where economy has turned on on its head you know yeah. like there's so many little things that can make you money that you know for you to do what you, what you need to do with your family or for your family or friends and just you know just being in a great situation to where you're not sitting up there stressed out trying to figure out how you was going to get this dollar dollar burger from McDonald's it you know, just to have something to eat so um, yeah so I, I think like with well what have you found like have you found um, young people are taking taking it faster than the older people because i'm pretty sure there's some type of degree because i do find a lot of a lot more pe younger people sh are starting to really get into finance yeah it's experience right so the best teacher in life is experience you need to learn things from All right so what the younger generation too and i would say banks are catching on because when you think about within the next 10 years money maybe money as far as the paper itself may be phased out because banks are doing a good job of having their products like credit cards apps and so forth to teach children how to budget spend money in x y and z so they know what it looks like to their allowance right so kudos to banks for doing that and so 
this next generation because they're focused on what's going on now and what's going on in the past is I gotta I have to have a nest egg right to make sure my fans provided for what does that look like I can have X amount of dollars in the bank right but if I don't have the dollars to maintain and sustain it I keep on pointing it out maintain and sustain and duplicate it I'm gonna end up being broke right which one of my friends was talking to you a few weeks ago of you know that he's um, he's of a, 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 a religion he was asking me about you know finances we grew up in the same in the same church um, but I, I know I've always been different and one thing I told him was about the 10 10 80 rule right so an example I said to him is like if you're in a hundred thousand a year right Uncle Sam has to get his right in the United States so that's 33 percent realistically of what you're earning that brings you down to 67 thousand right so that 67 thousand you know you're involved in your religion so you're paying them 6700 a year mm -hmm. right now of that now you have a balance um, now we take about 61 thousand three hundred but my question to you is have you even paid yourself yet because everything I might focus on is just a bill right and he said oh no I haven't even you know done that I was like realistically you speak about time and offering uh, we and I can go we can go back and forth on that all day I have my personal opinion about that however if you take that same money that you're giving to your religion right and just keep that same money in your bank and let it grow right if you are the person that wants to help other people instead you should reallocate that toward helping out your community now law of attraction is once law of attraction sees you doing that they're not going to point in a different direction or meet different people to help increase that financial gaining that you're looking for with your family now you're not worried about letting pay the paycheck because you're still the world is just rewarding you in different different ways you may go somewhere have a budget to buy let's say three hundred dollars worth of groceries but because you focused on yourself first and your family first buying help with the community as well you now got probably 50 percent off of that so you're going to spend 150. with the 150 you save you can now put that toward your child education All right so that's one thing that i that i speak to me about is that 10 to 80 rule save pay yourself first the other 80 percent learn how um is what you use like to pay your bills it's much easier. That rule is very strong, and it helps me out tremendously. Um, and another thing that the young people to go to that too, they're they're looking at relationships and branding. So what you describe as now is young people are focused on what is their brand to the world, to their friends, right? And they build off of that by developing a relationship. Hey, um, I'm going to start a lemonade business, and the they're, they're like let's say four or five cool friends right so here's tell your friends and friends about it right now they're creating free advertising free marketing yeah. so without knowing it these young folks are understanding the science of business right and then once they get to school to learn more about it it's gonna be much easier for them so that's what's going on now it, yeah i think it's amazing because like you know how they figure this is your free will with lady maya I am speaking with today, Mr. Andrew Baker. This stuff out and are so young. I think it's only because, okay, you know how when we were, we were younger, we had the imagination, you know? So we thought fast, you know, cause you had, you had to keep yourself busy. You know, mm -hmm. mom and dad was doing whatever they was doing and whoever was watching you was doing whatever they was doing. And you had to figure mm -hmm. some stuff out. And so I'm like, do you understand there's no filter with children? And no, with that, that gives them, mm -hmm. yeah, that gives them the access and that gives them all the creativity to make it work, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, but when we get older and we get to the point of actually working and doing things and then everything starts to get kept getting capped no you can't do this you can't do that you're not supposed to do this you know you're not supposed to do that and it's like the kids are like mm, i don't want to do what you say i'm going to do what i want to do you know and they do that um as long as you put some really really good morals in them i, I believe that they will take off with everything right. 
Right. And I think that is so interesting because it's just like um, they're they're catching on to the to the economy. They're catching on to world views. They're catching on to. I mean, there's just so many different things. And I mean, if we had all this when we were younger, man, our heads would explode. Like Lord Jesus, mm. so much. Mm. But it. But for them to like be able to learn how to just juggle. Know, to juggle mm. all that and still make it and still you know take care of business like they're supposed to school work and all that good stuff and and, right. and, and it's so interesting because like I saw um, I saw a YouTube video um, not long ago and this young man wasn't even 20 years old and mm. paid off his parents um, house and gave him a truck what mm. you mm. paid off your parents house and gave them a truck mm. and it's like i mean he didn't show that you know what he got for himself but mm. what he did was he said i want to i want you guys to understand i was not a good kid he said and i know they spent so much money just to put me through school he said i want to pay them back and see, th those were the morals we grew up with. You know, we're going to help help our parents. We're going to help whomever helped us. You know, we have good friends, you know, good company. But to see a kid, I mean, I don't want to say, I don't want to call him a kid, but he is a kid. You know, <laughs> like to do something like that, you have the money and you didn't just spend it and blow it on just some bull crap. You know, like mm. stuff that just really wouldn't matter. You really put in, because he said, I promised them that I was going to do it. And so I did it. And dad was crying. Mom was sitting there, like hands all over her face. She was just like, oh my God, I cannot believe that, that you know, mm. son did this. You know, he was, it was tough. It was tough. It was horrible, but mm. it was worth it, you know, worth going yeah. through. That's amazing to me. I was just like, man, testimony. What? <laughs> right, right. Um, but I, I look at that as, you know, something to really give us the understanding of we may know so much, but we mm -hmm. don't give our children the understanding of what they could know to mm -hmm. be more prepared for what they're going to endure. Right. Just saying. That is true. Yeah, and that's the key. You have to give your children the understanding. Because the kids and the, the generation now is not settling, as you had said before. They're now asking why. They're now, if you tell them, hey, today is sunny outside, they're going to ask you, well, why do you say that? Yeah, I see the sun. Right, they're gonna keep. They're gonna keep asking until they understand it themselves. They're not waiting for you to explain it to them. Exactly. Right, they're gonna they beat you to the punch. The heck out of it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think that's amazing, though. Like, I, 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 look at that as you know. Okay. This, this, this is doable. You know. Right. If they can do it, then I mean, we're older. Like, if we don't do it, something wrong with us. At this point, yeah. If we don't do it, someone else is going to do it. That's one of the things that one of my drivers. If I don't do it, somebody else would do it. Period. Exactly. It's, a, it's a spiritual thing. It's it's however you want to put it. That's just life. Yeah, it is. Um, I feel like um, a lot of the times the the elders before us, mm -hmm. um, with when it came to finance, it was just. You know, we just had to pay things off and, you know, we did we did everything without really telling anybody anything like nobody knew nothing, you know, and I'm like, how hard was that? You know, you just had to deal with it on your own right. and just not say anything to anybody. I told my kids everything. I was like, look at here, look at here, look at here. You're the mathematician, which was the middle one. <laughs> And I said, look at here, here's, here's the, here's the rent, here's all the bills, here's my, my, um, 
income. Mm -hmm. You make that work, I will take you to the bank and I will make sure you got some money. Okay. And whatever's left over is yours. And she looked at me and she did all the stuff. She came back. She was so mad with me. She was like, you know, you still owe $300. I was like, <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'm still doing it right then. <laughs> you know? Um, it's, you know, single mom, you got to do what you got to do. You got to, you know, rob Peter, pay Paul, you know, and that was always the thing. But I mean, you never wanted to stay in that situation, you know, or anything like that. Thank thankfully, so my kids are um, surrounded by people that know how to actually spend their money right. My kids got like a 100 credit score. It's ridiculous. I'm like, I this is good right now. <laughs> but it's okay as long as you're okay you ain't asking mommy for no money oh yes definitely <laughs> let's do that you know um but yeah i think like the more we can tell you know the younger generation about you know our mindsets the more they can actually give you more help with it because then they'd be like well if you do this and you do that and mm -hmm. let's see how this works too you know yeah. i mean they can give you a lot more like mental you know ideas on how to do your finances um better so that is you know it kind of works smarter not harder you know <laughs> right. because they have information readily available to them exactly. so there can be things posted on these social media platforms regarding financial literacy and they'll come back and tell you about it before you say, oh, okay. I'm going to tell you that just now, but you can be to the punch. Yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. I, wanted, I want my kids, I, I've always wanted my kids to do better than me. I was just like, I don't care what you do, how you do it, as long as you're mm -hmm. better than me. I was just like, don't, don't go the route that I, I went. You know, I was just like, if everything could be so much harder. Please don't do that, you know? Um, but yeah, conversations, man. Make you money, y'all. <laughs> Get this money. Get this money. But I think it's awesome. Right. Let me ask you this. Um, mm -hmm. With your... Because you do have um, an investor business, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, to that degree, like what made you think... Now, was that... A process with you and your finances that you wanted you wanted to do that or was that something that just kind of kind of came across you and you were like you know what that sounds like a good idea you know? <laughs> <laughs> well to be honest it was me reading um, the richest man in Babylon right uh, but pre before that was my mom said the same statement that you said like hey I want you to do better I'm looking at her I'm like how am I going to do better than you like I've, I've learned things from you but from what I understood as I as I broke it down what she was telling me was everything you learn from me I want you to find a different way to get to where I am faster right and then amplify it a thousand times okay uh, we had financial like I said financial conversations uh, where she always said to me, I wish I had invested. I wish I had invested. I'd be better off today. So I'm like, you know, what is this thing about investing? Uh, so she was the one that actually told me to read the book. Right. So I I read the book back and forth. And I saw how you know, the character in the book, in the book grew up, um, had no money. And then it was a person who was well off. And he asked them, just teach me how to do this. Um, Right, and from there he, he doubled, quadrupled his, his his purse, his finances. And so for me, I said, okay, invest is going to be something I'm going to get involved in. Right, the wealthy people in the world have more than one income stream. That's a known fact. Um, again, it comes down to it comes down uh, key things: relationships. Right, I value relationships over money. Okay, so these corporations do the same thing. If they're going to sponsor somebody. You know, they're going to ask you, what is your relationship with your consumers? If there is none, we're not going to back up what you're doing. That told me, one, relationships are very important. Right. You know, how you treat people, how you look at things. Um, knowing your product is very important, too. Right? So when you invest, 
right? You have to find the right person to build that relationship with who's going to give you that knowledge on the product that you're investing in, right? And if you also have to go in armed with knowledge as well, too, because you don't want people just taking advantage of you. So you got to know the basics or whatever you get involved in. So for me, when in my investment firm, is whatever I allocate funds toward is first knowing about that product, studying it, and then develop a relationship with somebody who's well versed than I am in this in this um, industry, and going from there. And that makes sense. I mean, yes, there's always going to be t- a bunch of steps to something that that mm-hmm. deep and that um, just very beneficial. Um, mm-hmm. I think for the most part, like I, I, man, I've okay, so. I've always wanted to be an a um, real estate agent, but I did want to be a broker. And I was just mm-hmm. like, no, I need to be a broker. I don't care mm-hmm. what anybody say, I need to be a broker. And they were like, why do you always want to be the top of everything? And I said, because <laughs> I want to be the top of everything. <laughs> like, you don't understand. And, um... I, I always looked at it as I much rather close on a house and get all the benefits than close on a house and get some of the benefits. That was just me, you know. Um, but I look, I'm starting to like really look into investments, you know. Um, I came across a few people that also had investment properties. And I mean, their, oh my gosh, their portfolio was ridiculous. I'm like, what are you, where are you going now? Oh, I got to buy these other three houses in this other freaking state. What? You're about to close on three houses at the same time? What are you doing? It's just like, this is what I do. And I'm like, oh, see, y'all messed up. Y'all gave me (laughs) access. (laughs) So, I mean, for now, like, in my mind, is who can I get in front of, you know? Mm-hmm. My mind is, you know, um, who do I talk to? Um, how do I just even get to the point of even getting in front of that person, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, always the little steps that get you to the bigger steps. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, oh, man, I was just like, Lord, whatever you see fit. <laughs> You dropped them in my lap, okay? <laughs> so, like, I know that that's one of the things that I want to do. I mean, of course, there's there's an array. I wish I could show you the book because you'd be mad at me. But <laughs> there's an array of different projects that I do want to do and I want to take advantage of because I do want to not only um, have, have it to wear as... Um, I'm doing well, but I want not just my family to do well, but I want a lot of other people, especially people that, I mean, so many people helped me. I was homeless. Do you know two kids? Dude, it was like, you know, and I'm like, I'm looking for them with flashlight in the daytime, sir. Like, I need to give you something. Like, do you understand how much you helped me, you know, to get me, you know, whatever. And so, um, I think that's that. That's what fuels me, if anything. All the help that I've always been able to get, you know. Um, heck, I don't have a problem with um, ever helping anyone. That's just that's mm-hmm. just. Me. And the thing about the tides, bruh, let me tell you, <laughs> I would hold on to it. And so, okay. if somebody told me they needed something, I would give it to them. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, sister girl was broke. <laughs> she was yeah. always giving something away. Yeah. You know, you know. Um, but I, I looked at that as more of a blessing because so many other people came into my life because of it. You know, okay. they helped me, not just mm-hmm. you know for anything else. But I, every every state that I've lived in, I always had a job. Always had a job, and I was just mm-hmm. like, I know that's God. Because God had everything to do with that one. Because it was like, all right, you helping people. You doing what you're supposed to do. You know? Right. And so I think that's immaculate. But yes, 
Yeah, I'm trying to be you when I grow up. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's an uncomfortable journey, but it is what it is. And that I would rather be that way. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we're going to be talking. I'm going to be like, yo, <laughs> Drew's gay. Um, but I, I, I think you are such a major influence for so many people. And, and I only hope that they understand, look, you only get you for a minute. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Like, you don't want to waste his time because he's got things to do. He's trying to help people. He's trying to get people the understanding of how big they can be if only they did maybe X, Y, Z and and different things like that. And I think that's, I mean, that's giving in, a, in itself, to be honest. You know, that's that's giving in itself. I mean, it's not always the, the finances, but the time, the effort, the energy um, that goes out to other people. I mean, that's. I mean, it's monstrous. Like, because if you yeah. really, if we put really put like numbers to time right. for you, oh, bruh, <laughs> bruh, like you would be like a multi billionaire. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, it'll it'll come. <laughs> come to do season. He will be uh, right alongside yeah. me because I'm be like, yo, <laughs> we got to get this. Um, <laughs> but I look at it as this is so beneficial, you know. Um, Hopefully that the people that are listening and I forgot the whole entire time. Okay, so if you're just now joining us, this is Living Your Best Life with Lady Maya. Lord Jesus, I don't forgot. I might have to put this in there later. But um, I think this was such a pivotal discussion that needed to really be had. Because, you know, a lot of times we are so fearful of things that we won't even move forward to do them. You know, because of fear, because of what was, um, what I say, I I say we were um, programmed in that way, you know, our people were programmed that way. Um, So, yeah, and, you know, (laughs) it's so weird to me because a lot of the older gentlemen, oh, (laughs) sir, the bullcrappity that comes out of their mouth. (laughs) <laughs> He's like, do you got a dollar? Yeah, young girl, I got a dollar. Let me tell you. Let me show you something. Wait, no, no. What I'm gonna need you to do? <laughs> you got cash on you in knots. You, you're not getting interest off of this. Are you not getting? You can't do anything when it's sitting in your pocket. But wearing that Japan's good. What are we doing? Because mm. your mind is in survival mode. Yes. Yes. Right. And so I got to stack up that, that paper. Yes. Get that knot. So it gives me a sense of security. Yeah. I'm surviving. If anything were to happen, I know I got this knot that can help me out. Not really. That's the mentality. Somebody well, exactly. Over, the, over your head and exactly. you ain't got nothing. <laughs> no. Exactly. It's like my 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 um my granddad used to be that way he used to i mean hey baby girl wait 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 no no wrong pocket <laughs> why why but i mean it is what it is if that's if that's the security that makes you feel good i mean it is what it is however you can make more off of it if you put it somewhere that let it build interest just saying just make sure you find out what the interest is when you go to the bank anyway um (laughs) i think it's one of those things that um we don't take the time to really have those conversations with the older people that are in our lives and maybe i mean just there might be a good bit of older people already listening. Like, you know she don't know what she's talking about. Them young kids, <laughs> they think they know everything. Like, no, we don't know everything. This is what right, we right. <laughs> right, right. But um, what would you say? What would you say to those that are, like, eternally fearful of actually putting their money in institutions? Because, like, like I said, they're scared. Uh, for someone that's afraid to put their money into tuition, I'm not going to be hypocrite because I, I even told my mom not to put money into the financial institution 
right? So I'm a numbers person, right? And, and it's plain to see that a bank actually tells you what they're gonna give you on the dollar that you put in there. All right, so let's say you get less than two cents on that dollar, okay? If you were to get involved with, let's say a real estate transaction, all right? Number, numerical breakdown, you're getting 20 cents on that dollar. Bigger difference, right? Uh, the first thing we have to do is again relationship find somebody that you can trust that you can put your money together uh, the Jews do it you know they, they put the money together and they buy property right um, and the Asians do it right they they all buy a house they all live in it they buy a business they all work in it once that business is successful they duplicate do another one okay now it's your turn right uh, uh, a guy I grew up with he and I, we're not blood related, but he's like my brother. Uh, he said to me that his boss was Jewish. And he um, he asked him, hey, you know, I would like to get involved in real estate. Um, you know, I'd like to get something like, you know, I'm living at my mom's house. I'm going to get something for myself. Uh, can you help me out? And he said, sure, I would. You want to know why? And he asked him why. And many people may call you back on this, Maya. And they tell like, yo, get that guy back on the on the radio. I don't like what he said. But it's true. The guy said to him, you know what's one thing that bothers me about the majority of the black race? They don't help one another out. Like you guys should be so far ahead because realistically the financial institution was built off Egyptian principle. So if you said Egypt, Egypt is in Africa, which means that you guys already had a launch already. You guys just gave it away. Yeah. Right? That's your fault, not my fault. Exactly. So um, he was telling me, so that's why he and I work together now. Because one. This is your free room with Lady Maya. I am speaking with today, Mr. Andrew Fenton. He said, it, had said that. He was like, you know what, bro, we're going to do something together. Here's what we're going to do. Whenever you find something, give me a call, let me know. Okay. Right? So for the older generation, for them, it's the fear comes from. Fear is man created, right? Because God never asks us to fear. You know, for those who want to bring it to the Bible, what if you turn that fear into the word love, right? Um, love God and give glory to Him instead of fear God and give glory to Him. That word fear is so powerful by itself that it can handicap certain people, right? So the only generation have been handicapped to a certain degree where they don't want to share information, right? And when they do, they don't know, know how to communicate it to the younger generation, but the younger generation is asking for their guidance because they're going to need that to become the future. Okay, so so for those who are old, that's what I would say is find a way to communicate in a way where it's they understand it. In a way you're talking to them as a child, but a child that understands all the words that you're saying. So like explain to an eighth grader that they can understand it. That's what I would say too. I think those are questions because our generation like that's how they have to communicate it. Um, to the younger generation. Well, I mean, it makes sense because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that we don't know because we don't want to know, right? Right. Especially mm -hmm. older, and it's just like to not know is ignorance, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's that will ignorance will stop you in your tracks. You can never be as great as you are. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting and standing on a class, like that's just Correct. not gonna work. Correct. Now, you may not understand everything, but if you find someone that's willing to sit down with you and give you the breakdown until you do understand it, that is not ignorance, it's common. And what we used mm -hmm. to say way back when, and it used to come up on the PBS specials, I love this power. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were installed in that. That you know what, sixties, what the seventies, seventies, eighties, nineties, something somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And you knew mm -hmm. that. You know, that was that was on pretty much every PBS special, that was on pretty much every front and back of mm -hmm. cartoons and you know, um G. I. Joe, come on. Okay, I'm just saying mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I was a tomboy. Um, so, you know, <laughs> be knowing and understanding, okay, knowledge is power. What if I don't understand? And so 
I would just ask questions. Mm -hmm. And if you don't ask questions, you won't know nothing. Look, 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 look. Like I tell every freaking person I know, knowledge is power. Yes. But the squeaky wheel gets heard. If you don't ask a question, you won't know that. Um, a lot of the times, okay, so I'm, I'm sister girl. Yes, mm -hmm. I am doing um, Forex, right? Okay. Do I understand it? Heck no. Do I want to understand it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, 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 I want to put a, a, a pin in that real quick. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm applauding you for doing that. I'm putting a quick advertising. I actually have a partnership in a gentleman who actually does forex actually does trade himself and he was he asked me how can we build this up because he actually wants to teach individuals how to trade right um the business structures where i come in the operation is so far the structure making everything's good but the knowledge as far as him there's a gentleman that went overseas to the uk um or one of the top branches there he comes with a family of people who have the banking background and he just always wants to get involved in that. So let's bring the pen in there. If you want to learn it, we can get a class together. Um, we can go from there. But interesting you said that. So yeah. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Because um, it's, it's tough. Because it's like, but, you know, people just give you, oh, I'm giving you this PDF. You know, check this video out. Do this mm -hmm. and do that. And you're sitting there and you're doing it the way they said it but you still don't get it and so you have to wait on other people's um schedules to kind of free up which is fine because my, my schedule is crazy too so i get it um but i'll be like man i wrote some books when when i was talking about i was on my phone like i don't understand what the heck i'm looking at this don't look right i need to show you this picture you know <laughs> take pictures and so even so it's just more so like it's harder when you have to try to figure it out on your own mm -hmm. as opposed to mm -hmm. actually like someone sitting next to me and kind of showing me look this is what you're looking at or even so they don't even have to be here they can be you know we can do the zoom share i don't care what you want to do how mm -hmm. you want it to look as long as you're there to actually be like, okay, I'm gonna need you to record this. And I'm like, Shh, you ain't saying I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Because now I don't wanna keep asking the same questions over and over again, and I not know that I'm asking the same question over and over. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's that. But yes, I'll be there. With <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, I think. <clears throat> You're an excellent individual. You're like you're setting such a tremendous, beautiful standard to black people. Like really, because like we really do need to jump on top of this. Like we have the mindset, we have the we have the know-how to figure it out. But will we? Is it more so out of boredom, or is it more so out of fear, or is it more so out of Mm. Um, the not knowing, not even understanding what that thing looks like or what can happen. So I, I, I look mm. at there's so many little tiny tidbits that's just ugh, like, wow, mm. like, what are we doing? This? No, let's not do that anymore. <laughs> when, when it comes to money move, I don't, I don't think that, um, as my personal opinion, I don't think that our culture makes moves out of boredom. I think they make moves out of fear, right? Um, I you know, like the projects, right? So you got to survive. It's like a it's like a daily it's like a daily war zone, right? You're fearful for your life, so you got to find a way to get out of it. So some will turn to what they need to turn to for them to get out of it, but that mindset is still there, right? Um, the fear of the unknown is something else that we can make a move out of. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I know I'm gonna get there, right? That's something that we say. So those are the two things I would say that pe that the moves are being made out of. Mm, that's true. Survival. What right. we say? Survival of the fittest. Of uh, the fittest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We say that all the time. 
Okay, right. so <clears throat> I'm just gonna say this, you guys. Um, you might wanna, you might wanna touch base and give encouragement to um, Andrew, and just be like, "Look, I got something out of this. Go ahead and do that." Andrew, tell them how they can reach out to you, beloved. Yeah, they can reach me at Andrew A N D R E W at Fueled by Money F U E L E D B Y M O N E Y dot com. Just drop me a note. But don't answer immediately. Don't get mad. You know, that's the, <laughs> like I'm doing. But I, I respond to all the emails. Yeah, <laughs> I respond to all my emails when I can. You can't. You can't expect. Uh, future millionaires billionaires <laughs> over there to be like oh let me drop everything and get this get right to this no right, right. that's that's not realistic you guys if you want him to still be a billionaire leave it leave it be <laughs> <laughs> leave it, leave it, leave it alone. um definitely definitely i would love that um i love our connection i love ever since we met i mean i've gotten just us having conversations have just been mm -hmm. so impactful to me and it just makes me and i thought i was just like man if i reach any higher i'm gonna fall like no no <laughs> no it's like drewski got me got you got you bro yes i feel that i feel that um all inside me and i and i thank you thank you so much for being on my radio show because like this is something that you know um a lot of people are not really getting a fair understanding nor having conversations with um those individuals that know what they're doing mm -hmm. you know and right. knowing how they're making that money so um you guys like i said you know you can reach out to them give them some love show them that you know that the information was definitely valuable um and different things like that you never know if you if it, listen if enough of y'all harass him Back. I'm just saying, this is what we trying to do. <laughs> yeah. But um, but he he'll be back anyway. But still, you know, we we at least want to know what the questions are. You know, um, maybe you know what is it that you're looking forward to, or you know, if you just have a question about finances uh, in general, um, please let us know. Thank you so much for joining me, sir. Appreciate you. Um, always appreciate you. And, you know, he got a whole bunch of things in the works and whatnot. You know, things yeah. happening and whatnot. You know, <laughs> I can't really say nothing. But... Right, right, right. That's <laughs> all I got to say. Yeah, it's happening. Right. It's going down. But, you know, um, it's all to benefit, you know, um, black, um, black people in general but you know those that's going our direction let's go there right. 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 um so certainly thank you so much and everybody thank you so much for joining me this is your free will yeah we didn't get a chance to get through his free will but that's why i said he'll be there. <laughs> right, 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 right. we'll definitely have that conversation <laughs> too um and so i will try to see if i can get a nice little treat in there for you guys um to get get y'all something to get started in the week but i appreciate everyone and i will see you guys later oh one one quick thing i do want to say that i have not been saying and what is wrong with me please Go to my YouTube. I am under Lady Maya. I have nothing but information, nothing but people that have businesses that are talking to the people. Um, if you are having issues with trying to find a good job, a lot of them are hiring. So you might want to check that out um, as well. Podcast is living your best life with lady maya that's maya spell m-y-y-a and so um if you want to be on any of my shows just email me that's admin at ladymaya.com or you can just go to my website ladymaya.com and so like there's so many different avenues that i want for everyone to prosper so just know that um everything that i do is for you to prosper so Yes. If you got any questions for me, then 
yeah you know you got my email address if you got problems you might want to get with my producer I'm just saying you know I don't I mean <laughs> he'll get back to me and get back to you <laughs> he'll get back to me and stuff yeah. but yeah. um but yeah no I'm telling you you guys if you need something please let me know um you can always get me on Facebook Instagram um LinkedIn especially I I think I live on that for whatever reason and um so so many different things are in the wheelhouse and I only hope that you guys are doing well okay but I will talk to you guys later look look for me that's Lady Maya and my YA and you know why cuz your home girl is special I'll be talking to you guys later